to Battle Rankings. Hi, welcome to Battle Rank. Rankings podcast. Uh, today I'm with Corey. Um, my name's Svetlana, and uh, Corey, tell me about uh, tell me about you. Yeah, yeah, Svetlana, I appreciate you having me on the podcast to hear from you and get the reach out to to be here. So thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Corey, and I am live. I live in Salt Lake City, Utah, and I am one of the. I guess you could. It sounds like a glamorous title, but one of the founding members of the Bravo Company uh, War Gaming Club, based in uh, Salt Lake City. It's out of Gajo Games, which is a really great game store in Sandy, Utah, where we usually do most of our meetings. So, yeah, we live in Salt Lake, and uh, I started a big club with a group of friends, and um, it's kind of grown from there. So. That's kind of just where I'm at right now. Uh, so what first got you started playing tabletop games? Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm sure we all have stories probably like this where I was over at a friend's house when I was in, I don't know, early middle school and his older brothers or maybe even earlier than that, who knows, but his older brother was playing on his uh, bedroom carpet. Uh, uh, Warhammer Fantasy, old metal Warhammer Fantasy models, and they were they had this massive thing going on on their bedroom carpet with no, you know, nothing was painted, nothing was that, but they were so into it. I remember looking in that room and just being like, "Wow, this is so cool!" Um, and me and that friend ended up getting into Warhammer Fantasy, Warhammer 40k through like middle school and high school, and you know how it goes: spurts of interest, spurts of not interest almost no painted models you're building them rolling dice without really knowing any of the rules or anything like that and then uh, once high school and college rolled around i kind of you know I, I still like to paint um paint and you know do the modeling but i just didn't have as much time or energy or focus towards it and so i kind of you know died off a little bit um in terms of the hobby aspect and then near my kind of like junior senior year of college um i ended up getting kind of back into it. And then once I graduated from college and got into full-time working adult life, I went into all the game. Now that I had some money and some brain cells and some time, it, it made it more uh, accessible. Uh, that, that definitely does make sense. Um, it's not always conducive to the busy life of a college student where money is short and so is time. Right, um, right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so you said you're one of the founding members of your club. What games does your club play? Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great question. So the club kind of started, I guess, two years, maybe a year ago, two years ago. Um, and and like I said, it's it's based out of a kind of centered around a store called Gajo Games, which is just honestly probably one of the best hobby shops in the United States. It has is actually one of the largest battlefront retailers in North America. Um, and so it's a pretty great um, breeding ground for, you know, the hobby and the club. And so at the time um, when I lit, moved to Utah, and so part of that was I was going there painting, you know, kind of meeting people infrequently or inconsistently. And so I realized there was a need for, you know, a way to bring people together in the community and try to get people communicating. And so um, I know the question was what games we play, but I think a little context helps because we do have a lot of interest in the group. The reason for that is, is because um, at the store, I come to a couple of close friends that uh, together with me to start to create this group and bring a bunch of various groups together into one big club to help basically encourage people coming together and coordinating their efforts. And so between that, we have a lot of different games. We've got, of course, we do play a lot of Battlefront games between Flames of War, Team Yankee. We do have, like, I have quite a bit of Nam and Great War miniatures painted up myself, and those get played sometimes. Um, and then we have uh, Warlord games interests, so Black Powder, Bolt Action. Um, I think those are a little bit of, like, Victory at Sea as well. I know Blood Red Skies gets played. Um, and then we also do have some 30K. That's actually, I think like everybody that kind of took off a little bit with the release. So we have a good amount of 30K, which is historicals, right? I mean, come on. And then uh, we do have some like Kill Team and 40K and a little bit of Age of Sigmar, but 
those are definitely, I think, on the lower end of the spectrum, with the main games being uh, Battlefront games and Warlord games, followed by probably 30K. So with so many interests within the club, how do you kind of have that organized? Yeah, yeah, and it's it's actually been something we're trying trying to talk better from an admin perspective. So we have a good group of admins that we run a Discord chat, which I think is a good way to keep everybody together and communicating. And within that, we have kind of five or six key people in the Discord that are kind of like, you know, they each have their kind of focus on which games they really like. And so that's one aspect is I think it's each game, game system kind of has a quote unquote leader from the ad admins stand that can help organize events kind of administer the channels and make sure everybody's you know playing nice so to speak and help organize games and so i think you know the discord chat and making sure within the group there it's kind of stratified in terms of you know okay my friend jordan is in charge of a lot of the bolt action events and all the bolt action group so to speak and then we have other people that help with the battlefront events and the battlefront paths and helping organize those games um, so I think that's one thing that's been good for us is to have um, that stratification. But then we do try to organize uh, monthly club nights. They're the second Thursday of every month at Gageo Games from 5 to 9 p.m. And we just invite anybody to come out, play whatever game you want, organize it in advance, bring stuff to hobby, bring stuff to painting. You know, they're still growing. We're trying to make them better attended. Um, but it is a good opportunity to just get people to meet in person and get some games on the table. And so I think it's another way we try to facilitate um, the community growing and connecting and playing. Um, so you're talking about how it started just about two years ago. How did the start of the pandemic also kind of hit that? Yeah, yeah, it, it was interesting. Um, it definitely transitioned quite a bit. You know, I mean, it was nice to have the Discord, quite honestly. You know, it was it was nice to have that because I think it was still kind of um, developing at the time of the pandemic. So we, you know, we didn't have quite the membership that we have now on it. But I think it was nice to, you know, the group to, was communicating over Facebook, Facebook Messenger, stuff like that. But then also the Discord. So it was difficult. I mean, there's no to it definitely is different um, but if people did play some virtually i didn't really do that because these games it's like if for me personally it's a tabletop game it should be played in line on the tabletop if i want a computer game i'll play a computer game <laughs> um so i didn't yeah, really do yeah. that i know some of the club club members did um which is a great great opportunity if you want that but just was things up COVID, but you know, once some of the local restrictions and um, COVID uh, rules in Utah kind of, you know, relaxed a little bit, we did pretty quickly get back to, um, you know, Gay Joe and, and playing there, which was, which was awesome. Um, it, it slowed it down, but it's really kind of boomed after COVID because people were so excited to get back and get rolling dice and meeting their friends and stuff. Uh, so what if uh, you're talking about game nights, what other events does your uh, club have? No, no, it's not your fault. I don't know if it's my end or I don't know what's going on. But um, in terms of events, so we'll typically do bolt action events. There's two, typically one to three um, a year. Um, that's run by some of the guys that are really passionate about that game. That usually gets pretty good turnouts. They're usually themed events. But then we also do battlefront events, usually once a quarter, so once every three months. Um, recently, we just ran a really successful mid-war escalation league and around, you know, Battlefront's relaunching of mid-war. And so we were really excited about that and had for about five months ran an 18-player escalation league that was very successful, starting at uh, 50 points and building all the way up to 90. So that was awesome. Um, we also recently um, had a Flames of War tournament. Uh, we'll also be having a Team Yankee tournament coming up in uh, February. So. In terms of events, we really do. Um, we're pretty active with most of the game games getting a event of some sort once a quarter at the minimum. Um, and so, and honestly, it's because we have such a great group of kind of you know leaders, I guess, in the group that organize it and get people out and do it. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. And to get eighteen people to 
consistently show up to a game or to a tournament is really impressive, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you. It was it was great. Honestly, I was impressed at the turnout and it was a lot of new players too, which is what we're trying to do, right? Is help grow Flames of War and Team Yankee because, you know, I know there was a lot of gripes between V3 and V4, but, you know, and I played in both. I like V4 a lot better. I think it's much more accessible. I think it's quicker. I'm not 100% sold on command cards and how that creates such a um, web of issues sometimes in list building, especially on a competitive level. You probably have seen that. Mm -hmm. But overall, I really like the streamlined rules. I really like how easy they are to pick up. Yeah, it's. I think sometimes um, just as some, like John is much more of a skilled uh -huh. list builder than me. So he'll be like, oh, just build it through the command cards. And I'm like, what do you mean build it through the command cards? And he's like, well, if yeah. you build it over here instead, uh, you get these these bonus points. And I'm like, but why? Right, right. Like, why yeah, are these feels... points? Why are there benefits here and not over there where it's? It, it feels very gamey and I and no, you know, no more power to you if that's your interest. But, you know, we, we try to focus at the Bravo Company Club is it's about fun, nicely mm -hmm. painted models and getting models on the board. It's not about and, you know, again, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's not about winning at all costs. So sometimes with the, in the you know, there's a time and place for that, but events we just focus more on the trying to make sure everybody has fun. And um, so a lot of times like. The, the award that gets the most prize support is usually the best sport and the best painted, right? Um, it's not the first place guy. Um, and so anyway, you know, extrapolate on that. I do think the command cards can lead to some of that really creative and strong list building, which is great, but it also for new players, I think you really, and even existing players, it sounds like maybe the same with me, you get a little overwhelmed by what the, what it all means. I mean, there's so many times where I, I think, um, I don't know how you feel about this, but like you just kind of forget about the command card, the command card aspect of it and you're building and you're building and then it's almost an afterthought. Right, right. I agree. Unless it's lucky, I usually just forget about it. And then, <laughs> and then the, and most people don't even like lucky because they think it's kind of cheesy, but you know, you need that dice roll, that enforcement roll, or that you know remount check. Sometimes you need the reroll. <laughs> I always forget that I have lucky. Like I'll bring it, and oh, I've just okay. started to like not incorporate it into my list nearly as much because I always forget I have it anyways. So I'm taking a 99 point list when the rule said 100 because I'm counting on the lucky card. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like Sorry, you got your cat dog. above you. Oh, dog. No, okay. that's the dog. Gotcha. Playing, like, gotcha. No. Right above me. And it was just like, <laughs> could you please but, stop? <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Just, I don't like playing with the, I don't like bringing the lucky card nearly as much just because I always forget I have it. And then what, what use is it if I don't use it? Right, right. No, I get it. I, I think the other thing, and you know, you saw some of this at, uh, I can't even remember what the event was this year, where there was a really weird list that may was illegal, maybe it wasn't legal. I don't, I don't even know I the know details, nor do it. I really care. I just, yeah, I don't, I know it was a hornet's nest and I don't have a dog in that fight. Besides the fact that I think the command cards in areas where it's really hard even for the game designers to know if legal or not. So anyway, I mean, at the end of the day, the escalation of players playing over five months, two games a month, they reported the scores. We kept track of the tallies of the different sides, rewarded people for playing with painted models. It was great. We had a lot of people. It was, I will say, I was pretty, um, we were pretty disappointed with Battlefront's lack of uh, supply during that time, though. We had a lot of players who couldn't get the models they wanted for their army. And now it's being dropped, but the mid-war hype has kind of died down a little. So it was a little bit bad timing, I would say, in terms of the availability of models. I think the availability, mo the model availability issue is more than just, uh, more than just, 
your area. I think it was just about everywhere was had a supply and demand issue. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so, it, but uh, anyway, so our club, we do try to actively run events, and we know it's a big, you know, it's a great way to build a community. It's it's been a reason way that I kind of kicked it off was with the help of one of my uh, friends now in the group, Brad, who uh, I, I actually met him through Flames of War, and we kind of kicked around the idea of trying to integrate and congregate the Utah gaming scene a little bit better through Bravo. Um, and he and I kind of started some of the events through like a couple of Flames of War tournaments that have then grown into this club. And so definitely if anybody's listening, it's like, oh, I really want people in my area to play with, or I really want a small group. I think that's the biggest thing is you just got to be willing to show up to a store that's, you know, a game store and say, hey, I want to try to host a tournament. You just do it, right? And yeah. You just uh, learn from and that experience. Uh, yeah, and that's really a challenge, um, probably facing players, newer players that just are still figuring out the game, and they're also trying to figure out how do I play this game with other people consistently. Um, and that's where clubs really pull in a benefit, right. but also it's not always the easiest thing to find a club everywhere you go. Right. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, it's one of those things that if you build it, they will come. I'm a firm believer of that in life in general, definitely in, in gaming. I know some places are by their nature going to be, you know, sparse in terms of player base, but a lot of places are going to have people that like military history, that like, you know, the idea of hobby and getting playing game. And so I think if you, if you have the desire, you, you know, hopefully you can, um, utilize a game store, utilize Facebook, utilize whatever you can to try to slowly but surely build something up, right? So you're talking about how there's roughly about 100 people that kind of interact with your club. What area do they yeah. kind of come from? Yeah, our members, we have around 130, not all active on the, the Facebook slash Discord. Um, so, but everyone, the majority, the vast majority, I would say almost everyone is based in Utah. Most people in Salt Lake City. We do have some people up north and um, some of the, you know, suburbs up north of the city and then some people down in Provo area as well. Um, but almost everybody's local and we do try to encourage that. We don't really want it to be a forum for just anyone in the country to join and chat. We want it to be a Utah club where Utah people meet and greet and talk about the games and get excited together and play together and so we do try to make sure the people coming into the club or it's really only advertised as a utah group it's not really open to you know anybody and their brother or sister right right that makes sense um i just know some clubs have a larger pool than others kind of like uh i think indianapolis is a really great example of it where you kind of get people from Ohio and Indianapolis, but also kind of Illinois, depending on where they're at. Um, just because of their centralized area, I think Pittsburgh is kind of similar where they they have a kind of a strong pull because of the number of stores that can host just in that local area that they can get a decent pull from. Uh, local states yeah that makes sense and one and so i'm actually from indianapolis indiana i went to school and or actually around um, northwest ohio and so i'm very familiar with that area and i actually the reason that it's kind of funny the reason that we are named bravo company is actually because when i lived in indianapolis as a young kid i did end up the able company um game nights tournaments events very you know not a lot because I was still, um, my eyes at the time would felt a little intimidated by because I felt like I was very young for the crowd. Uh, not, you know, everybody was very nice, but I just didn't really know what I was doing. Um, but Chris Fretz was very nice. I'm sure you probably know that name. He's a pretty big guy in the community in Indianapolis and probably in the U.S. And he was very, very nice. Yeah, he's been on um, the show a few times. <laughs> yeah, I would think. Yeah, I know. So I don't know him super well, but I do remember him. And then when I first had this, 
idea in Utah that, hey, we've got this awesome game store, Gageo Games. We've got, you know, I know there's a lot, they love Battlefront games at Gageo. They're one of the biggest stockists. And so it's like, this is a no brainer. We got to try to build a, a community around this great store. And so I actually reached out to Chris and asked him for advice on, hey, what do you, how do you run a tournament? How do you put together a tournament? How did you create Able Company? I think it's awesome. And he gave me a couple of pointers that I was, you know, my office of guys that in helping put it together, um, we kind of ran with. So that actually we're called Bravo Company is because uh, we got the, you know, I got kind of the inspiration from a company in Indianapolis. Um, and one of the things I was going with that is that the reason Salt Lake City is so much different that like the West is so much different than Indiana, Ohio, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, you can kind of be anywhere in two to three hour drive where Salt Lake City, the next, you know, Denver's eight hours. Um, Vegas is eight to nine hours. Arizona is 12 hours. Phoenix is 12 hours. So there's not really, it's much more spread out. So there isn't really a central hub for multiple states to kind of frequently get together. It's just so far. All right. That makes sense. Um, yeah, that, that makes sense, uh, with just geographically the geographic challenges yeah. presented. Yeah, I, um, I do know that some guys from like Rock Springs, Wyoming will come down to the bolt action events we host. Um, so we do get some players, think a lot of other things going on because I know like Denver has a pretty good scene. I think Phoenix does as well, but because they're so far, we don't really get those players, but we do get some Rock Springs, Wyoming um, players for the bolt action events. Okay. Okay. I know uh, there's, some dry areas for tournaments um here or there depending on what state you live in yeah. um so i could i could believe somebody driving from wyoming for a tournament i mean we'll drive we've driven down to uh we'll drive down to fort knox uh kentucky elizabethtown area for hard that's knox awesome. game tournaments and that's a five-hour drive for that's us that's awesome um yeah but it's it's a it's that's a, great it's yeah that's really larger cool. tournaments and it's worth the drive and worth seeing the people for a yeah, few we, hours yeah yeah that's great. just this talk is getting me kind of excited to put together an event for maybe the winter or the fall or, or the spring i mean it's i i do uh i do enjoy um the events and getting people together and to your point if you build it people will come right and you actually get it advertise it and you know you got people like yourselves doing great things getting the community a little bit more um spotlight on the internet i think is a big deal as well uh maybe you'll have to let me know i'll have to see if i can get out there <laughs> <laughs> all right careful you know there are the there the salt lake airport you can get in and get out pretty easily <laughs> I've I've flown by myself a few different times already. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, we yes, I uh, I will plan to. And I'm I apologize. I'm blanking on the guys who run the podcast, the U.S. Battlefront Games po podcast. I think they do the hard tournament. Do you remember their? You know they do. They're like one of the only U.S. Battlefront Flames of War podcasts. They used to be like the WWPD guys. Um, so I know that No Dice, No Glory used to have, um, we used to have some connection with No Dice, No Glory, and they would do some different uh, stuff beyond just write ups. Um, but I know they've been focused mostly on articles at this point. I'm not a hundred percent sure if that's what you're thinking of or if that's, um, yeah, I know that. Yeah. I appreciate that. It was the, the, I was thinking of those guys and they helped, uh, when we were first starting out advertising for the tournaments we were doing and stuff. And so that was great. Um, and so, yeah, no, I, it's just, like I said, people like battle rankings doing great coverage, people like no dice, no glory, even the breakthrough assault guys, all that stuff is awesome, right? I mean, it helps when you're a new player looking at a game system. There's so many options, and you're going to go to Google, and you're going to Google the game's name and see what pops up. If you don't have good content like battle rankings or any of the other stuff, it's not going to 
take off, right? And so all, all the efforts that like yourself are doing is awesome and it helps people that are in the ground and the communities that are trying to help a game, you know, get off its feet and play and get people interested. It, it goes a long way to have the air cover. Yeah, and um, I, I really try to make it a goal um, when I'm when I try to create content for battle rankings, so that it is inclusive as much as possible to the various uh, different player types that might be around, whether it's a seasoned player that goes to tournaments a lot, or if it's kind of the um, hobbyist or player that's kind of just investigating what's going on with the game. Right. Right. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So um, I can't remember. Oh, you had just asked about the events. And so that we kind of stemmed off from there. But yeah, that was that's kind of we we actively try to put the events together. And it's definitely a big motivator for our in terms of getting people painting the same things and getting people excited about the same things. It's like we just recently had a Thanksgiving event. That was some of the bolt action guys were interested in that you know all those guys were painting tanks for a long time getting really excited about it which is awesome uh, we've got everyone's really fired up about the uh, red dawn release coming up i mean i'm busily painting um my east german force that i'm trying to put together for it and i'm really excited about that i played uh, some team yankee actually last week with a fellow club member named drake we did uh iranians versus his british and it was awesome it's super fun so we've we're starting to get, I can feel the momentum wave starting to shift into some Team Yankee, which is exciting. And you know how it goes. There's ebbs and flows of interest. Mm -hmm. I can definitely feel Team Yankees on the rise right now with Bravo. What was the receptions with not just um, the new uh, Eastern Front book, but with the um, Battle of the Bulge, the new Battle of the Bulge book? Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on, King Tigers, plastic. How can you not be excited? <laughs> uh, no, I, to I gotta with... say, I think the group. Oh, go ahead. You don't have to deal with the the resonant pewter tigers anymore. I have I have three of the resonant pewter ones, and I don't have any of them built because they just seem so intimidating. <laughs> um. But I, I think overall, you know, I, I'm not going to lie to you. The last um, three months, four months, I've been really on the 30K momentum wave. So that was, I think, the only unfortunate part for Battlefront. Not that, you know, they can do anything about it, but they released old stuff right as the 30K wave was dropping. And I think that hype train definitely, I was really, I am still excited about it. I've been painting a bunch of iron hands and building that. But so it kind of, I think, took back my foot off the pedal of the bulge. Um, release. That being said, I followed all of it. It all looked really nice. And I do know that the players in our club that are dedicated just to him tour and Team Yankee, they were really excited about it and have been gaming it quite a bit. Um, and I definitely have it on the radar as well. I, I was excited to see those British um, SAS and uh, Recce, Airborne Recce Jeeps come out. I want to add those to my Red Devil course now. So did you watch the build i i know you uh we kind of talked uh how much do you watch the podcast or listen say that one more time how much do you watch or like listen to the podcast uh i'm a more of a podcaster than a youtube so i i listen to the podcast but i don't watch a lot of youtube content in general so don't take so that personally check, I just... check out the build a list with me podcast okay. episode i build a british list um with the recce with the reckies and i build a whole british list with uh tim tim with That's tim awesome. and oh yeah great and and how did you fit into it huh How many uh, Jeeps did you fit into the list? A lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's. It, it was a lot. Uh, let me see if I can't find it. Um, 
I, I'm using it for my uh, the Masters side tournament uh, list. When is the next big um, event? You know, for from your guys' standpoint, do you have some stuff coming up? Uh, yeah. So the uh, side tournament um, Masters is this weekend. That's our big tournament this weekend, oh, November wow. 19th. Uh, we will be doing a live show on Sunday to do the last few, uh, uh, to the, do the last uh, two, three rounds. Um, and Tim McClellan and I are going to be doing commentary uh, that day. Awesome. Um, so let's see if my screen does that thing that it did earlier or not. Um, okay. If I can pull back up the page again. Uh, and if you already, if you've seen the episode already, you probably already know what this list looks like. Um, oh, there it goes. Uh, we'll do it that way. Mm. So this is the list. Name Angry Kitten. Yes, Angry Kitten. So there's a That's reference funny. here. Um, in one of the earlier episodes that I, when I first started doing this, um, I, I made a, a, I made it as a comparison to good lists with players that aren't experienced enough to play those good lists. And it's like playing like an angry kitten. Uh, because it's, it'd be scary if it's good, if you play well. Right. Otherwise, right. you just look like an angry kitten. Because <laughs> you think you're vicious. Yeah. But you're not. So usually... <laughs> I'll get yeah, John to help me with my right. list. Right, I... So usually I have good lists that I just don't know how to play. Um, so here is my <laughs> That's funny. support. The one of the requirements was you had to have one non-armored unit. Um so for that I have uh, the uh, pa Royal pa uh, Parachute, Parachute Royal Royal Engineer, Parachute Royal Engineer. Uh, with an anti-tank uh, and petards and then all of these Reese's and Universal Carriers. Mm -hmm. And then more. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then uh, I have added you, uh, have you put an animal together. NMR any of the any of the what? Wow, that's great. That's great. Have you put together any of the jeeps? The jeeps. Um. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I have these. I think these are the Jeeps. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. That's what these are. Oh, yeah. I could probably get rid of this list. No way. Um, that's cool. So it's that's an obnoxious great. You're working on it now. Uh, it's an obnoxious amount of Jeeps. Um, this yeah, is those, one those of those. Those are really good. Uh, I'm doing the very sure. Sure. basic painting for all of the British, which is really easy to do because I have my British list and then I have John's British list because he's playing in Masters. Oh, so that, very cool. Very cool. So well, I'll, I'll have to follow the play. results of Masters coming up because um, that'll be interesting to see. Yep. We'll be doing a live show. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is. Yeah. Uh, we'll be doing a live show. It'll be really exciting. Um, and I just have a lot to paint <laughs> before this weekend. Um, 
between everything. Um, so yeah, the the angry kitten list is. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. I'll be fun. I'm glad I will. There's nothing like a uh, last minute painting before an event. So we've we've all been there before. That last minute painting before an event is a real thing. Yes, unfortunately. Um, or fortunately. However you want to look at it, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, whatever. As long as it gets you painting, right? That's that's half the that's half the good of events, is getting people painting. Yeah, I may or may not know what the trophy, uh, the um, Joe always gives out a trophy of the best, uh, of the top player of the entire season. Um, and I may or may not know what that trophy looks like because I painted it. Oh, cool, cool. Well, can you share anything or is that gonna have to be under wraps? Uh. Unfortunately, I don't know a whole lot because I haven't. We haven't been able to do like any no, shows. No. I don't have any of the masters things, so everything is under wraps. Um, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You don't need to spoil anything. <laughs> Joe has been very busy with life, and so we just haven't necessarily had the time to do a bunch of shows. Um, but it'll be fun, and that's true. Um. It'll be a good time. It'll be a good time. Uh, so where can you be found? Where can the club be found? Yeah, so the Facebook is, we do have a Facebook. It's not that active because most of people are on the Discord. Um, but if you're from out of state, you know, and you, you ever wanted to, you know, watch and see if there's a tournament or event that we're hosting, and you want to fly out from, you know, Ohio, um, um, we, I would, I'd recommend getting on that Facebook group, um, because we, that would be totally fine. Members a little bit more local, just because we want to, you know, encourage local gaming. We don't want it inundated with a lot of different, you know, but the Facebook would be a good spot where we do try to post the events. Um, also, Gage O Games, if you call them, we keep we schedule all of our events through them so they would have it on their calendar. And I'm going to try to do a, be a better job and I'll share with my fellow um, kind of admins or group leaders that, hey, we have an event, let's reach out to you over on Facebook just saying, hey, we're going to be setting this event up, you know, share it with your audience. Um, so we'll try to do a better job of that. So I'd say if you if you live in Utah or the Mountain West area, um, and you're close, just just find us on Facebook, Bravo Company, War Gaming Club. Um, and then also we have a Discord, but once you get on the Facebook, we can, and if it's appropriate, we can add you to the Discord, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've done different uh, press type videos. I call them smash ups because it's just like a little, a bunch of little vignettes, um, 30 second interviews from different players. Uh, I've done one off uh, for Advance the Colors and one for um, Gen Con. Uh, and it's kind of just a bunch of smashed up things. So that's what I go to big events for. I just kind of like, oh, hey, would you like to do a quick interview? Um, and then I get it up, I'll like nice. put it all together and get it up like that following Sunday. Um, real that's quick. Great. And it, it, great. it makes well, a busy I'll weekend be sure to keep for you me, in the loop. but, um, but I, sure, I like to go yeah. to big, big, big tournaments for like press type stuff. Um, That's great. Uh, and it kind of, it highlights the, it highlights the game uh, and kind of the different people in the game. Cause I always find it interesting to, to learn that, oh, someone, this is someone's first tournament. And this is their experience. This is what they learn. Um, or uh, this person is there because they they signed up for a demo game, uh, and they had kind of like there was like a demo demo side game going on with the tournament, and someone is just learning about the game, and they were able to take advantage of an opportunity, and it's a super cool. Um, 
thing to hear about. And I think it's fun to hear about those experiences. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, we'll do a good job of making sure you're in the loop when we do um, events so you can um, get them out to your channel if you think it's appropriate. We're always happy to uh, connect. Yeah, uh, and Cliff Polig always updates, uh, usually does once a week, once every two weeks or so, he'll put up um, a new listing of tournaments um, from just about everywhere and wherever we're told there's tournaments at. Okay, so is that someone I should contact? Because I actually, and you know, maybe this isn't the best podcast content, or yeah, podcast content. But if you could email or you know send me that person's contact, I can also share them the dates of our events because we have we have obviously have like we've talked about events pretty frequently, and we can get those on the list. Yeah, yeah, I'll be able to I'll I'll be able to uh, direct you there. Um, uh, how do you recommend people find gaming groups? Yeah, it's got to be local stores. You know, I wish there was a mad, you know, there was a secret recipe to it. But at the end of the day, I think the biggest thing is you got to try to find a local gaming store that carries a game that you're interested in, or at least has tables that they'd be willing to let you set up your armies and play on. But that's that's the biggest thing you have to find is a local game store that either there's some people playing there or you then from that game store use it as a base to create a player community. Um, I think if you don't have that, it's going to be kind of difficult, quite honestly. Uh, so that would be step one. Uh, and then, um, how do people? How would you? Uh, what would you tell someone looking to maybe start a gaming group if they're sure. kind of in yeah, those I think, dry uh, areas? Yeah, yeah. I think the biggest thing is trying to make yourself um, very, very uh, approachable, right? And make sure you're at uh, honestly, it's still you need to try to find a way where there's a, a gathering of like minded people. So typically that is going to be at a hobby store, local game store. Uh, you know, the there's always magic, the gathering, it seems like at a lot of game stores. So obviously that's not what we're doing. But if you don't, you know, that could be the next best alternative is try to find a, a community like that. And then, you know, go with two nicely painted forces and offer to play with people. Right. Or. Or go and ask a store manager, hey, do you know anyone that plays this game? Please, you know, next time they're in, give them my contact. Or is there a place I can put on a message board of, hey, this is who I am. This is my contact. I would love to get a game of this. And, and, right? A couple like-minded people then play at a regular time at a store in a public place where people go to and they wow, what is that? And then stop and be friendly and explain to the new person that you're meeting what you're doing and be approachable. Don't just, oh, we're playing Flames of War, leave us alone. I'm trying to decide on if I'm going to charge or not. You know, don't, don't be like that. You got to, you got to introduce, you know, you got to be welcoming and make people want to walk up to the table and ask you those questions. And, and then, you know, it'll hopefully grow from there. Create a, create a Facebook group. Okay. It's, run the first events. Okay. Hey, I've got six people I've got going in my community. I'm going to run a little flames of war. Nothing is ever too small. And so don't be afraid to just try it and see what happens. So, um, I think it all, the key is making sure you're going to places where you're going to find like-minded people and then being approachable and having at least, especially in new areas, two armies that are painted to the best of your ability, because, you know, it's, you probably heard me say this a couple, couple times big slur about playing with painted models like i i i think the enjoyment of these games is tenfold when you play with two painted forces on a nice table as opposed to armies of gray pushing around and i get it life's busy i sometimes you know i get it but i think you really need to encourage and utilize nicely painted forces when playing to help get people interested in the game because it just it sparks something in people i think I think it shows off the potential of what it can be because I really do appreciate. Uh, I'm not the most I'm most skilled player, um, but I do appreciate the art of the art and history of the game. Um, so I think it kind of shows the potential of what this little piece of plastic can be versus what it is straight out of the box. Um, oh, and it kind I... of shows that off a little bit more than just. It, it's, it's kind of boring. It's kind of boring to look at on the sprue. It, 
I couldn't agree more with you, Svetlana. When a two nicely painted forces are on a table, like I could, I love just looking at it. It is very inspiring to me. It like totally puts me in the moment. It totally is. It's very immersive, right? And so I have a, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think it does draw people in when, when you see a table and, you know, I get it, there's limitations. So I'm not trying to be, you know, a major stickler, but I think it's just a good reminder that everybody should really always try to put their best effort into getting their stuff painted and playing with painted things because it's just an all around win. Um, and yeah, it'll help bring new players. And it is funny with the difference it is when you've got two gray models and that you're playing the same game, right? You're doing all the same thing, but you've got gray armies. And then if you swap it out and you do painted armies, it's just 10 X cooler. <laughs> uh, especially if you're, if you're new to the game, new to what is being seen and you're just like, wait, I can do that. How do I, how do I get this effect? How do I um, make it look like this? What is that weird little decal and how did you put it on there? Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and that's just it. It's it, everybody has their own level and that's great. Right. I don't, I don't care about the quality per se, as long as it's their best effort, right? And it's always trying to improve and get better. And that's me, I don't have the best painted stuff, but you know, I, and so that's one thing our club has been doing to try to encourage painting is that events, we always give players more points if they're playing with painted things. And sometimes we just require it all to be painted, but then we've been doing monthly painting challenges. So like October was paint something spooky. November is paint a terrain piece. Um, a couple three september was paints either five 15 millimeter tanks or one 28 millimeter tank so just trying to get people in painting by doing these monthly challenges and giving little prizes for whoever you i know, think something i've seen a little bit more is custom objective markers and that might have been oh, something cool. that kind of was kind of started out of i don't know how much of it was started out of what was in like kind of what was kind of seen in 40k where people have their or 40k and warhammer in general where they have like their own custom mar objective markers that they can kind of build and do whatever with um or if that was kind of like oh this is kind of an awkward thing but it's cool and it looks great so this is now an objective um I i'm not sure where that necessarily came out of but I think I've seen a few more custom objective markers more recently in the past years. Yeah, so. yeah, that's cool. And it's always way more fun to play over that as opposed to just one of the little, you know, little plastic things they give you on one of the, I love the gaming tens. I do like objective, but, you know, they got all the utility, but it is fun to fight over some custom, uh, custom objectives for sure. So that's actually a good idea for a potential monthly hobby painting challenge for us. So thank you. <laughs> um every now and then john will 3d print something and i'll be like and he'll be like hey this misprinted and i'm like cool i'm gonna make an objective out of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's great that's great because it'll be like the tires warped or like something with like the top of the tr top of the truck or something and it just like looks awkward so you can kind of like Maybe it got blown up. I don't know. You tell Looks me. Like it got... Right, right, right. Yeah, that's great. And I like those. You can still sometimes find those old custom Flames of War objective markers, you know, the old resin ones that are really cool. Um, I have a couple yeah. of really cool North Africa ones that I painted up that I really like a lot. Yeah. Um, and it, yeah, I think the art of it, it kind of, well, it has a good initial pull. I don't want to say it's, keep someone in the game but it has a good initial pull pull into the game for sure for you sure. buy the models and then you paint the models and then what am i going to do with the models and then you show up with a turn show up meet a few guys and they're like hey why don't you play with the models yeah yeah exactly it's a full circle <laughs> yeah um any closing thoughts to um this 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 conversation it kind of went a few different directions <laughs> yeah yeah no no i i just wanted to say you know thank you for the opportunity
opportunity to kind of put Bravo Company on a little bit bigger of a stage. And um, I really appreciate what you guys are doing at Battle Rankings and helping trying to grow the game at, you know, at the, the point that you're interested in. So I didn't, you know, from a standpoint, if, if anyone listening to this um, either is in the Mountain West area and wants to get into Flames of War or really any of these games that we've talked about, yeah, look up Bravo Company, reach out to us. We're definitely very welcoming and um, we always love new players and are always I'll teaching have your players different in the games. Okay, great. Yeah. And so we have, we, we always are enjoying, you know, local new players that want to come out. And so from that standpoint, we're, we're always trying to grow and help, help the hobby grow. Um, but overall, yeah, no, I just appreciate the time and um, look forward to hopefully now staying in touch and maybe someday linking up for an event. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I always appreciate having um, guests on uh, for for different things. I have an idea that uh, I'm working with Tim on for another video uh, coming up that I think uh, will be entertaining. It's always entertaining when Tim's on. <laughs> yeah. I... Uh... I have one more thing I have to share is that we are pretty sure this is kind of an inside joke in the club, but have you heard of Warlord Games um, Slain, the, the board, the game Slain, S-L-A-I-N-E? I don't believe so. As you, I would be shocked if you had. It's like this very, I don't know, hole in the wall game that, war, you know, Warlord Games is notorious for just releasing tons of games. And then, you know, anyway. I think that we have the largest slain player base in the uh, North America at Bravo <laughs> Company. And it was all kind of started randomly by one of our buddies, Andrew, who created a little um, slain uh, obsession with a few of the players. So it's been kind of funny. So if you're ever, you know, bored, look up what slain is in uh, Bravo in Christmas, put on by a couple of the passionate guys. It's going to be slain miss or slain miss i think is what they're calling it and they're like 3d printing santa clauses and slain miss yeah and they're 3d printing all sorts of christmas themed things related to this silly game so we always like to give within the club it's always a joke that the slain has are infiltrating everywhere and trying to convert people to this odd game <laughs> <laughs> so i would be all remiss right. if i didn't talk about that dude <laughs> all right well thank you for watching thank you for listening uh like comment share subscribe tell your friends uh especially if you think that they should know about us and they probably don't um and hit all the fun buttons uh and we'll be back on sunday <laughs>